There are many great places to hunt in the world, and one of the most unique is New Zealand. Situated 1,200 miles off the southeastern coast of Australia are the beautiful islands of New Zealand. Located in the heart of the South Island is one of the world's greatest red stag hunting areas. High mountains called the Southern Alps dominate most of the island and extend at the highest peaks to over 12,000 feet into the sky. New Zealand separated from the landmass of the supercontinent many millions of years ago before game animals had evolved. This geological isolation resulted in coastal seals and forest bats as the only native mammals on the islands. Even though no place on the South Island is further than 40 miles from a coast, the island has an incredible diversity of terrain. With about three-fourths of New Zealand's 3.2 million population living on the smaller North Island, there is plenty of habitat for wildlife. Colonial New Zealanders had the rare opportunity and made this pristine country into the ultimate sportsman's paradise. When the first Europeans settled in New Zealand in the early 1780s, they found a country rich in unusual plant and bird life, but without the large game animals they were accustomed to seeing in their homelands. By 1867, acclimatization societies had been formed in each of the provinces. Their purpose was to import many different species of game animals from around the world, which included red stag, wapiti, tar, chamois, deer, rabbit, and game birds for hunting and the fur trade. Such was the success of these liberations, and in particular the red stag herd, which were mainly sourced from the Scottish Highlands and the deer parks of the European nobility. New Zealand became known by the early 1900s as the ultimate destination for big trophy red stag. Tough mountain guides packed the early trophy hunters into the remote New Zealand wilderness on hunts often lasting for over a month. As the herds continued to flourish in the extremely favorable conditions at the risk of overpopulating the available habitat, it became imperative to start managing remote private land specifically for trophies and balanced game populations. As a result of this, New Zealand maintains the international reputation as the best red stag hunting destination in the world. we need to do a lot of walking and then we need to sit like we're sitting now 
and do a lot of glassing with our binoculars. It's a very expensive area with a lot of vegetation down in the gullies. The red stag are, are one of the service family. They're related to the North American elk mm -hmm. and also to the Indochina seeker deer. Okay. Mm. They range in, in, in weight from between 180 kilos right up through to 300 kilos. Well, so they can be you know, very, very large and particularly hard to kill. They're very strong. Two years ago, we shot a fabulous red stag from this very area that we're hunting now. Mm -hmm. uh, he scored 407 SCI, so he's the current oh, number one world record. Yeah. We've got some tremendous stag in this area, and if we hunt hard enough and long enough, we've got a, an opportunity to perhaps, you know, shoot one that's so that, that's comparable or, you know, perhaps bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we have to hunt very, very hard, and we have to be prepared to put the hours in and we'll do a lot of work it. and pray. <laughs> Professional hunter Lindsay Frazier guides Indonesian hunters Yapto Sorjo Sarmarno and Ramat Shah. Descendant of the royal family of Java, Yapto is one of the best known and liked people in Indonesia. He initiated one of the world's largest youth organizations and is currently involved in opening tourist trophy hunting in Indonesia. His hunting experience is extensive, yet he has never had the opportunity to stalk Red Stag. To have tremendous red stag trophies, herds need to be protected and enhanced through sustained modern game management. New Zealand Trophy Hunting Limited is doing just that. And with the world-class stag trophies being obtained by their hunters, New Zealand Trophy Hunting Limited has the enviable reputation of providing the ultimate challenge for these superb mountain monarchs. Through the dense thorn scrub in the valleys of the Favran area, Lindsay and the hunters use the cover and stalk to within rifle range of what appears to be a tremendous red stag. As they approach downwind from the backside of a draw, Lindsay, Yapto, and Ramat crawl through the thorn scrub and climb to a clearing on the ridge. The stag remains unaware as he grazes along the hillside and creates ambient noise with his antlers in the bush. If he stops here, you take him. Only if he stops. Yep. He's down. Lift your bolt. Okay. All right. Fantastic. It's all right. What do you think of that stag, yeah, huh, Roman? That's a good one. It's a hell of a stag. Yeah, yeah. He's really wide. Yeah, yeah. He's really wide. Yeah, and he's got these big long points on the top of it. Yeah. Really, really wide. Uh, no <laughs> That's a good stag. Uh, no <laughs> yep, Dave, congratulations. Yeah. You've shot yeah. a very, very nice stag for your first red stag here in New Zealand. Mm. Quite big. Mm -hmm. He's very big. He's got a nice spread. Yeah. He's got light, nice long mm -hmm. top tines, but also the length of them is very important when you start scoring them. He's, he's not particularly strong in these bay tines, mm -hmm. but he's nice, nice in the brown and the, yeah. and the tray tine, and then you know exceptional up mm -hmm. in here. This is the first biggest red stick I ever shot. Is it possible to get another bigger one? <laughs> we can try. I'm not promising anything, yeah. but we can try. Yeah. As a native of New Zealand, Lindsay Frazier has grown up hunting these mountain regions his entire life. He is widely known as one of the greatest guides in the South Pacific. His knowledge of the areas, the characteristics and routines of red stag, and most importantly, trophy quality, gives him the ability to get the hunter in just the right position for a successful hunt. From the island of Sumatra, 
International hunter Ramat Shah joins Lindsay as they stalk a red stag spotted from far across the valley. Just two days prior to this hunt, Ramat had witnessed his hunting companion Yapto take a red stag that almost scored in the top 10 of the SCI record book. The situation is almost identical as the stag feeds across the hillside, unaware of the hunter's distant appraisal. This stag's right antler has a throwback, reminiscent of some early stags documented in this area during the early 1900s, and this genetic characteristic has been passed down for over a century. Once again, Lindsay and his hunter quietly approach from behind the natural barrier of the hillside, using the wind to their advantage. As a younger stag spooks from the valley, Ramat is in excellent position for the shot as the stag comes into the clearing. He's down. Fabulous. Okay. Tremendous stag. Thank you, thank you. It's a good okay. one, huh? I think we'll just move over here and just have a look. Grande. Oh, oh, look at that. He's only, just out from the velvet. He's only just stripped his velvet. How many points is he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Wow, that's a good one. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. He is amazing. Look how this, this big throwback comes back. He's got all the points coming off it. Yeah. You know, normally red stags, they come up in a cup. Yeah. They very rarely throw back. Yeah. It's really unusual. So you think this will be in the record book? I'm sure it'll be in the record book. And, Thank, I, thanks and I'm again. sure it'll be thanks top again. 10 as well. Yeah. It's a nice trophy, yeah? It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Besides Red Stag, New Zealand Trophy Hunting Limited offers record book hunts for tar, chamois, wapiti, sambar, fallow, sika, rusa, wild goat and Arapawa ram in various areas throughout New Zealand. And as the hunters walk just below the ridges of the Fabron area, Lindsay spots an exceptional ram. Yapto makes this hunt look easy, but the rams are always hard to locate and often escape the inattentive hunter. Good shot. 
He's going down. Fallow bucks have been known to kill each other while fighting for dominance during the rut. Finding a top-class trophy can be extremely difficult, as the small points that protrude from the backside of their palmated antlers can easily break off during these epic battles. Those points combined with length and mass determine the total score of the fallow trophy. Just look straight up. Long way. Did you see that fellow buck? Yeah. He's a long way away. Take Don't take it. If you think you can, he's very, very nice. He's got a lot of points around the back of his blade. Okay. I think if I'm done. You need a really steady rest. Okay, he hasn't moved. You can just take your time. Remark, do you think you can take the shot? Yeah. Do you think you make it? Yeah. Okay. Get a good steady rest. Yeah, when you're ready, take him. Yeah. Ah, don't have my That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, hit. Yeah. You hit it. You hit it. An incredible 300 meter shot puts Ramat high into the record book. Congratulations. Thank you. Longest, longest shot of the season. After their success at Favarin Station, Yapto and Ramat take some time to travel along the South Island and sample the fishing. New Zealand is famous for its incredible trout and salmon fishing and it isn't long before Yapto's luck continues. I'm just about sure we'll find that thing. There we go. No hunting today because of that. In the old days, the thick forest and its undergrowth in the lowlands would add days and sometimes weeks to the length of a hunt into the high country. Today, helicopters ferry the hunter to the base camps in these areas within a few minutes. We're in a very good area here for chamois. Yeah. A lot of rock, a lot of snow grass, a lot of kias. The kia is a member of the parrot family and is indigenous only to New Zealand. The kia at one time was facing extinction, but thanks to concerned conservation efforts by the New Zealand government, the kia is no longer threatened and is strictly protected. I think what we need to do is to get onto a sidle yes. and pick our way down through those rocks. Yeah. Get onto that next ridge. Once you get over there, you look into a big basin. 
Yeah. It's got a lot of cover and a lot of very good habitat for chamois. It's probably climb from this. Yeah, we need to climb we'll and just go up and down, pick our way round through those rocks. We have to be very careful and get onto that ridge and then we can look into the basin. Okay. Okay. Once in the chamois area, the hunters must traverse the slippery snow-covered mountainside. The soft snow combined with the deep tussock grass and high altitude creates an extremely difficult walk. Chamois bucks have dark black and brown hair that blends perfectly with the wet rocks that cover much of the Alps. Finding a chamois is demanding, but locating a trophy buck is almost impossible. Knowing where to look, Lindsay leads Ramat forever higher into the rocky outcrops that conceal the chamois. Whenever danger looms, chamois will immediately dart beneath a rocky ledge or seek thick bushes and tussock grass to hide in. Often the only way to spot them is as they traverse the rocks between areas of vegetation. There's a big black rock. Yeah. Okay. Now just come down below it. There's two chamois. There's a young buck and an older black buck. So you take the big one. You need to the take the one. big black one. Okay. okay. Now get yourself into position to shoot up here. Load your rifle. Don't shoot when they're running. Wait for them to stop. Just follow them. Follow him, okay. When he stops, it's a long way. Ramat's chamois is at the top center of the picture. I get it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hard work to get it. Not less than 250 meters. Oh, it was, it was at least 250 meters. Yeah. But from the the, the, the the look that I got of him, I think he's probably one of the biggest one with 